The Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler is a World War II era torpedo shaped fountain pen, which as the name suggests, features a vacuum filling system. And that vacuum filling system was developed in an effort to support the war and help reduce the use of rubber domestically. The pen is mostly made out of celluloid and it features conically shaped top and bottom finials. The top finial features the Schaefer white dot, which has become a symbol of quality and a lifetime warranty. The clip is fairly short, it has an arch style, and it is spring-loaded, making it a very functional clip. The cap has a tapering design widening down to a pretty wide cap band, which is free of any markings. The cap comes off in just one quarter of a turn, and it reveals a very beautiful two-tone 14 karat gold nib. This style nib Schaefer coined as the Triumph nib, but it's also referred to as a tubular shape. And on the back, we have a black plastic feed. The section has a tapering profile with ribs that give you good grip. We then have a thin metal band that has threads to help secure the cap in place, followed by a bit of celluloid and then a step up to the barrel, and the barrel is straight till about this point. If I give the barrel a turn, we can see an engraving. The engraving reads W.A. Schaefer Pen Co., Fort Madison, Iowa, USA, made in USA. And on the bottom, we have a date code of 1250. And just below that, we have an engraving. I bought this one secondhand. The original owner was named John Go. Right at this point, we start seeing a taper going down to the end finial. If I give the end finial a twist, we can see that it doubles as a piston knob. Pulling that piston knob back, we can see a metal rod, which inside the pen is connected to a rubber seal. Pulling the rod all the way back will allow us to fill the pen. If I put the nib into ink and I push down on this rod, it will create a low pressure system behind the piston inside it, and at the bottom of the barrel, we have a flare out, which breaks the seal and allows ink to be drawn into the barrel. In the hand, the pen is a very comfortable length and it is very well balanced. It's suitable to use for long writing sessions. And if you like posting your caps, you can. It posts securely and deeply. It makes the pen a little bit longer, but it doesn't really alter the balance. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Triumph Vac Filler, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with a few other fountain pens. Up top, we have the Waterman Dauntless, which I recently restored on this channel. This pen dates back to the 1930s and 1940s, and just like the vac filler, this one is primarily made out of celluloid. Below the vac filler, we have the Schaefer Stylist, which is a torpedo-shaped fountain pen that dates back to the 1960s. I have this one in a gold-plated material, but it also was offered in a variety of other finishes. And at the bottom, we have the only modern fountain pen on the table today, and that is the Pilot Custom 823, which is one of the most popular vacuum filling fountain pens on the market. I have these pens arranged from smallest to largest. The Pilot and the Vac Filler are the only ones that have rounded finials. The other two have squared off finials. The two Schaefers both have spring loaded clips and the other two have bent metal clips. The Vac Filler and the Custom 823 are both vacuum filling fountain pens. The Dauntless is a lever filler and the Schaefer Stylist is a cartridge converter pen. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps removed. All caps unscrew with the exception of the Schaefer Stylus, which has a pull-off cap. In their uncapped form, the Vac Filler is now the shortest pen, followed closely by the Dauntless, and then the Stylist is longer than that, and the 823 is the longest of the bunch. Let's take a closer look at these nibs. All four nibs are made out of 14 karat gold. The two Schaefer's are both tubular shaped nibs, which again Schaefer termed as the Triumph nib. The Stylist is a much shorter nib than the Vac Filler. 
and the vac filler is a two-tone nib. The Waterman and the Pilot have a more traditionally shaped nib, and also their sections are more traditionally shaped, with a flare-out at the top and then a tapering portion to threads, which both are smooth to the touch. Both of the Schaefers, in contrast, have a tapering profile section without a flare-up at the bottom. And the vac filler is the only one that has threads built into a separate piece. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps posted. All caps post securely and deeply, and in their posted form, both of the Schaefers are about the same length, and they're the shortest of the bunch, followed closely by the Waterman Dauntless, and then the longest is the Pilot Custom 823. To disassemble the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler, the cap unscrews, and if we take a look inside, we can see there isn't a cap liner, so there's nothing really to disassemble from this cap. For cleaning purposes, I would recommend just running it under warm water or perhaps soaking it with a little bit of mild detergent. The nib can be unscrewed from the front of the pen. And you may find gripping materials such as these would be useful, um, but mine is loose enough that I could get it fairly easily. The nib is a tubular shape, as I mentioned previously, and it is friction fit onto this feed, so I would not recommend removing this. For typical cleaning, I would just soak this or perhaps put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. And then for the rest of this pen, if you wanted to remove the vacuum filling unit, you would need a special tool. Let me see if I can show you. On the bottom of the piston knob, there are two slots right there, which you're gonna need to get a hold of with a special tool similar to this Asvine wrench. This Asvine wrench is a little bit too wide for this piece. Um, you would attach it to that and unscrew, and that would loosen the rod from this piston knob and allow you to push the entire rod through the front of this pen. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that special tool, and luckily, this vacuum filling system is working just fine. You can see there's a lot of pressure buildup. Um, so maybe down the road, if I do need to do some maintenance, I will post an update. But for um, the purposes of this video, I do want to also show you that you can unscrew the barrel from the inner sleeve. And there you can see the vacuum filling rod. Also, the metal band that contains the threads is loose in this assembly. So once you remove this back piston knob and pull off the um, outer sleeve, you should be able to take this ring off as well pretty easily. So for today's video, that's as far as I'm gonna disassemble this pen. And then in terms of reassembly, it's pretty straightforward. We are going to screw back on our nib unit. And reattach our cap. And now we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler, today I selected Waterman Serenity Blue, which is a nicely saturated blue ink that's easy to dilute with water, so it's very safe to use on vintage pens. I'm running a little bit low, so I filled some into an ink miser, which we'll use today. Cap unscrews. And we're going to unscrew the back piston knob and pull the rod all the way back. Place the nib into the ink and push down on the piston rod to draw ink into the pen. I'm going to do it one more time just to see if we can get a nice full fill. I don't want to do a super fill with this pen, but I can see that I did take out quite a bit of ink from that ink miser, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Let me wipe off the nib. And if we look towards the bottom of the section, we can see there is a little bit of translucency, and that can act as an ink window. If I hold the pen upright, I'm going to pump this a little bit. We can hopefully see some ink filling into the section. Just like that. I'll go ahead and cap up the pen. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler. Cap unscrews, and I am going to unscrew the piston knob 
to allow ink to flow from the barrel into the section nib and feed. And today we're writing with a 14 karat gold tubular nib. This nib has a little bit of history to it. Um, when I first filled up this pen, I started writing with it. The tipping material actually crumbled and broke off. I reached out to a couple nib smiths that I know, and they recommended I try and find a replacement nib because it would just be too expensive to try to weld on extra tipping material. So what I did was I actually used some micro mesh and slowly ground down this nib to become somewhat of a stub point. So I'm going to call it a stub 14 karat gold nib. And doing that um, will somewhat shorten the lifespan of this nib, but I figure if I'm going to have to replace it anyway, I might as well enjoy it while I still have it. In terms of ink, as I mentioned previously, we have Waterman Serenity Blue. And then in terms of Flex, no real line variation to be had. It is a very stiff 14 karat gold nib. And for reverse writing, it's smooth, but again, take the caveat that I personally ground this nib, so um, your mileage is going to vary there. Also, the feed maybe did not keep up all that greatly towards the end. So for this particular pen, I think you could reverse write for a thinner line, but it might not be the most reliable line in the world. So what do I think of the Schaefer Triumph Vac Filler? I'm a big fan of this pen. I really love the design. I think it has a nice flowy look to it that is very seamless. There's very minimal trim really when you look at this pen. We have the clip, which is fairly short, but the spring in it makes it a very functional clip and easy to get over fairly thick fabrics and notebooks. The cap band is wide, yes, but it also goes down to the end of the cap, which means that it will help prevent cracking. So that's a great feature to see. And then as we work towards the back, the piston knob matches the same material as the pen body, and there's no trim ring in between. So it does become a very nice clean look, which mirrors nicely to the top finial. Also, I love how quickly the cap unscrews. It unscrews again in just one quarter of a turn, which is fewer turns than I have in any other cap in my collection. I love the nib. It's a beautiful 14 karat gold two-tone nib. If you look closely, the breather hole actually has a little bit of a heart shape to it. So that's a nice attention to detail. The grip section has a nice tapering design, which means that you can grab it in multiple locations, but it also has these ribs that give you good grip. And then I also love the ink capacity of this pen. It being a vacuum filling pen means that the entire barrel can be filled with ink. And I love the historical significance of this pen. Not only is that filling system great, but that filling system is also something that was developed in order to support World War II and reduce the use of rubber domestically. So this does have a lot of historical value. Now, in terms of areas to improve with this pen, I have a few. Um, probably the most major is that it's not that easy to disassemble, especially since you need a proprietary tool in order to remove this back piston knob. Um, but really in the scheme of vintage pens, that's not really that big of a deal. And if you hunt on the internet, you can find that tool fairly easily. And then also the cap, even though I love how quickly it does come off, 
Um, I also have found that it doesn't really keep the nib dry very well. If I leave this pen for four to five days without writing and I uncap it, I more often than not will find that the nib has run dry. And then lastly, probably my biggest gripe is that it's not very easy to check the ink level. I showed during the filling up portion that you can see the amount of ink just at the bottom of the section. Um, right now it is dry, and if I give the piston knob a few pumps, it will fill up with ink. But there's no real way to check the level of ink that's in the barrel itself. And what I wish Schaefer would have done instead is maybe make the barrel out of a translucent resin or consider striations similar to what Pelican did with this M400. But with all that being said, I am a big fan of this pen. I find it's extremely comfortable. It's a reliable note taker, very easy to uncap and jot a quick note. Um, since I did end up grinding this nib, it writes just the way that I like. And I also, most importantly, love the historical significance of this pen. Both of my grandfathers fought in World War II, and when I look at this pen, I'm reminded not only of them, but also how amazing it is that industries around the country rallied together, innovated, and tried to support the war effort. And to them, as well as the military, we owe a huge debt of gratitude. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.